Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. In this one I will be... Well, the last video wasn't very successful. I... Yeah, the science is pretty low, so... I'm thinking... Just exploring a different planet. I'll try to make it, um... A lot better of a mission than last time. This one, um, will be a manned mission. So we get some boots on the ground. Yeah, I think knee boss. That'll be cool. And this is a different um, format than I usually do. Usually, I talk over um, time lapse of my of me already doing this, but yeah, th this this is not that. But thought it might make a nice change. So, well that's only for certain segments, I can't do it for everything. So I'll try to slap together a craft pretty fast. Right, so I want... So, so I want some life support. Um, some way of keeping them alive. Which would mean over here. And science will be on there. I'll lay out the basic craft here, then polish it a bit. Um, I guess I'll call it that later on. Um, in a quick time lapse. So I've got. So I'll be able to re-enter. Wondering, so I do have a payload, and with the basic payload, I can't. Sorry, um, this, uh, and then wondering. No, I cannot use tweak scale on that, so that that will change how I build that quite a lot. Hmm. So that can land and things still need electricity. So some quick solar panels and some batteries. Okay. And then, with that, I'll just add on some quick parachutes. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just use tweak scale on that. And then, there it is. And that'll be able to slow us down, I think. Hopefully, that'll be enough. And then... I think a basic Poodle engine. Vacuum optimised. 2500 OV, that'll be... Quite a nice... Amount. But I think maybe a bit more would be useful. Three thousand. I'm not sure I can get much more on that stage. So I think I'm not. I'm not just gonna have a boost stage on that. That won't be good enough. I'm gonna need another stage here. Same size. I do not have the Nerva engines, which is a bit of a shame. That is about half the Delta V, but I think it is necessary. Maybe even that. 
is necessary because it won't have much for us to weigh it will up. That'll be right. Yes, yeah, so if I have that in orbit of Gaia, that will probably be enough. Yeah, that'll be enough for orbit. Well, when I'm in orbit of Gaia, to hopefully get to Nabos. Then you get a very powerful first stage. Um, I'm going to make it. 3.75 meters. <laughs> this is a very impressive rocket. I can imagine it causing a bit of lag though. Slight downside. Right. First to wait, that is not enough, so. Let's add some side boosters, probably solid. There we go. Uh, yeah, it's the standard kickback. Look, actually, yeah, let's increase its size, wow. With tweak scale. That is enormous. Incredible. And some nose cones. Okay. Lovely. I'll just finish this on a time lapse. Okay then. Thank you for that past me. And now I shall do the um that time lapse I just mentioned. So right here I'm just adding the science and the crucial um crucial things for flight. I added some uh tail fins. And so now I'm just modifying the electrics to make it look a bit better and just have overall better stats. Um, there we go, I'm just moving that back. Checking the snack supply, I realise that that's not good enough. So now I'm adding some radial uh, snack tins. Well, there are actual radial snack tins in the game, but these are cylinders that are meant to be placed on. Yeah, anyway, so they can be decoupled when they are empty, so that's useful. And I'm just Doing the auto strut, as you can see here. And three, two, one, on to other me. Thank you, me. And on to this scene, we have. Well, I just started the launch. Um, it's mostly being propelled by the two solar rocket boosters. Um, yeah, that's where most of the thrust weight is coming from. And because of that, I mostly have. The main engine turned off, so I could have a lot of fuel. That sounds good. It would have more delta V, but um, this was not a good move. Yeah, I just skipped forward a lot because um, the fuel starts to dwindle. You know. <laughs> um, well, no, it, it's not that it dwindles, but the problem is it has like no thrust to weight. Um. Yeah, so it starts to uh, slow down its ascent, as you can see here, and after um, probably about 10 seconds, 20 seconds in game, it's been sped up from, uh, through editing. Uh, there we go, thrust weight is now beyond 1. So now it is ascending, and I'm starting to... Um, I believe it, that is it, the axis is axis is pitch. I'm just gonna yeah. If so, it's gonna pitch over. I don't know. Um, and I'm just following prograde, raising the apoapsis slowly, and there we go. Bit above the atmosphere. Good enough. And because I get a bit impatient, I start the burn early before I even get to apoapsis. And because of that, it's not exactly a circular orbit. But I'm planning to what like escape um, 
Gaia's sphere of influence anyway, so no need to worry about the orbit. All the details about it. And there we go. Got a beautiful scene flying through or flying past the rings of Gaia. And because this game is weird, I, I just got pulled back by that. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> and if you just point to that, um, that encounter, that's not why the orbit changed. That that, that was in the next orbit. I'm not sure why the orbit changed. It doesn't really make sense to me. It probably makes sense to most of you watching, but uh, not to me. And I did overshoot that burn, I, I don't think I was really paying attention. Okay then. So now I'm trying to initialize my maneuver to get an encounter with Naboss. Um, and after after two orbits, I do finally get a all right encounter, which I also hear to get a full on encounter. And now I should just um, well I'll just skip until uh, <laughs> skip until I've completed the wait, which unfortunately I could not do that when I was playing. Right then, the wait is over, and now, um, just skipping forward until, just skipping forward until it is, until it's quite close enough to actually do the manoeuvre. There we go. Just on time. Um, I was aware of, at this point, that I could not do this burn with this stage entirely. Um, as you can see in the bottom left, the fuel is dwindling fast, and there we go. Used up that stage, and now I'm using the final stage. Um, or well, the final booster stage to do that, and I'm just funneling the snacks into those main storage areas there. Um, yes, it's been a very long journey through all, but sorry. Well, yeah, two solar orbits. So, <laughs> yeah, 200 days in solar orbit. They use a lot of snacks. Okay. Now, now I'm just adjusting the orbit here. Trying to get a orbit that passes close over the atmosphere. I aimed for generally about 100... Um, 100 kilometers up. If this was real life and that was Earth, that would technically be just skimming the atmosphere. Right then, just warping into its sphere of influence. Um, only 50 days. God, these curvils must be pretty sick of being in that cramped uh, little capsule there. Like in the Apollo missions, at least they had like bit more space than this and there was three people so yeah I don't know what I'm getting at there <laughs> just those carbons must not be happy anyway so there we have um, arrived here you can see it epically looming in the distance Naboss and just draining out those snacks putting them into those main modules looks like we're nearly at about the point where we have no snacks left um, on those side bits, which is pretty good, so we can save a bit of Delta V um, to carry the empty canisters, although they do not weigh much. Um, I apologize if you can hear some red arrows or whatever they are um, flying um, in the background. Okay, there we go. So we've got a circularization burn, just about planned. And uh, uh, my earlier statement about this being at around 100 kilometers, clearly mistaken. It does not look like it's 100 kilometers, more like 200 kilometers. And I did overshoot that. Um, and now I've had the shot. 
Yeah, I overshot that burn way too much. Um, I did not. Yeah, I, didn't, I went too far towards her. I couldn't manage to. Yeah, so <laughs> redoing it here. Luckily, I clicked quick save before. Three, two, and one. There it is. Okay, fairly circular orbit. That does not look <laughs> like this planet looks just amazing, but it's moon. <laughs> um, like it still looks amazing, but it's less glorious, I guess. I'm curious what the nighttime side looks like. It seems to have some red glowing bits, so. Yes. I doubt it's tidally locked, so. Hmm. I'm curious. Maybe it's some sort of material on the surface that just does that reaction occasionally. When it's not in direct sunlight. Okay, anyway, we've got science here. Yes. Yeah, and okay. Sometimes it's fun to do the science from inside, for well, from the EVA and flying around. Um, a bit more fun than sitting in the capsule and letting your science do it automatically. Look, what, okay, you're doing it, but like the kerbals aren't. I don't know. I do enjoy um being on EVA and going around with the kerbal. There we are then. Um, it turns out the uh, the snacks did not run out in the side canisters before we used up the last engine, so there wasn't really any point in having them on decouplers. I might as well have just glued them to the side instead of gluing them to decouplers that were glued to the side. <laughs> um, and gluing them is probably a very accurate word since. It seems, well, the kerbals, they aren't, well, they aren't very precise with their tactics. They do seem to sometimes have not very safe looking parts for their rockets. Anyway, we've got deep enough into the atmosphere that we've slowed down enough to, um, well, to release the parachute, and now, um, because it is thin. Sorry, it's a much thicker atmosphere. Um, well, I did a flight test before this to check if parachutes would be enough, and turns out the bottom um, canister exploded. But um, this time, because it's a thicker atmosphere, the parachutes work more. Um, they slow they slow us down more, and because of that, we will touch down relatively softly. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye.